All right, we're recording. And of course, you will both have copies of this file and be able to use it any way that you wish. I'm honored to welcome back Sheriff Richard Mack, the founder of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, and also Sheriff Brad Rogers, who is today an elected commissioner. Uh, they are the best representatives of what has been called by the Wall Street movement and some very, very concerned uh, deep state actors, the sheriff's movement. These men have had the temerity to suggest that the elected sheriff is the highest law enforcement authority in any given county and can, with deputized citizens, say no to corrupt federal, state, and local officials who seek to betray the public interest. I am moved and inspired by both of these men. I'm going to start by just showing a statement that I've written because I am a former spy. I have worked with blackmail. I have worked with uh, bribery. I have worked with uh, brainwashing, if you will. This is very, very real stuff. And the point that I want to make is we have to ask ourselves if our elected and appointed officials have, in fact, betrayed the public interest and been bribed blackmailed or brainwashed. Sheriff Richard Mack, you created uh, COSPO, but I want to start with, uh, with Sheriff Brad Rogers, and I want to just show very quickly his brilliant, brilliant statement, which I think is right up there with Tom Paine's common sense. A sheriff can and should interpose for his citizens against an overreaching federal, state, or local government. Sheriff Rogers, I could not agree with you more. Please, sir, tell us your story and inspire every American to understand that the sheriff is their last great hope against an overarching deep state seeking to destroy the Constitution. Well, thank you. thanks. It's great to be on the show. And let me just say that I learned a lot of being a constitutional sheriff from Richard Mack. And uh, he he's kind of set the tone. And I think every sheriff is in kind of a uh, a different stage of learning and, and understanding the Constitution, but he, he set the stage and the CSPOA uh, helped me uh, be, uh, you know, develop into the sheriff that, that I became. So um, it started uh, really back in uh, the days of Hurricane Katrina and Ruby Ridge and seeing what, what happened. I wasn't even sheriff then, but, you know, just seeing how uh, there was an overreach in federal government. And then ultimately I came, became sheriff in 2010, uh, elected and uh, was elected through 2018 in Indiana. We have two term limits, so I was term limited. But um, the, uh, the issue there is uh, I, you know, oftentimes sheriffs protect people from criminals, bad people. But I really believe that, that sheriffs should protect their citizens from an overreaching government. That could be federal, state, and I've even experienced local overreach where I've stepped in and they've backed off. So uh, the sheriff is extremely powerful. We have arrest authority. Uh, you know, I'm very, I'm a very peace loving person. I strive for peace, but interestingly, a sheriff carries a gun and has deputies and, and the ability to uh, deputize people in an emergency. So uh, I, I want to share with you the, the situation that occurred in 2011. I wasn't even a, a sheriff a year when an Amish dairy farmer, and understand the Amish, they don't even vote, and they're very peaceful people, but he contacted me and said, I'm having trouble with the federal government. Would you come to my house and talk to me? Well, I knew this day could come. I wasn't sure when it was going to happen, but uh, Richard prepared me for this day, and, and so I went and spoke to him and he was being harassed by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration inspectors coming to his milk farm and inspecting his farm. And he said, I, I've always given consent to allow them in and I'm done with their harassment. I want, it, I want you to help me. And I said, well, are you sure? Because we're gonna open up a hornet's nest on this. And he said, I'm sure, which shows how brave he is as well as, a, as an Amishman. And, and so I, uh, with, I contacted Richard Mack and he helped me draft the uh, in information that I would 
uh, take a stand on. And so I um, put myself out there, I guess you could say, and, and said, look, um, FDA and Department of Justice, who happened to be uh, involved because they, they had a subpoena against the Amishman to bring all of his records to a grand jury. And uh, so I sent him an email because there was really no physical contact with, I didn't meet them there or anything like that. I just sent him an email and I said, greetings from the sheriff of Elkhart County, Indiana. I said, uh, I understand that, that your agents and FDA agents have been to this farm. And uh, because I have to follow the fourth amendment and so does everybody else uh, in government. And I said, because of that, I'm stepping up and saying, you are no longer welcome on this uh, dairy farmer's farm and you are not to return except with a warrant based on probable cause signed by a judge or I will arrest you for trespassing or my deputies will and we will uh, take you before a court forthwith. And um, that was, uh, I think around December 11th or so, uh, and with, of course, you can imagine when I speak to the federal government that way, they didn't take it lying down and they, they threatened to incarcerate me for several years. Uh, they threatened, um, to just, uh, unseat me and all kinds of things, but I'm telling you, um, there was no violence. There was no guns. There was no SWAT team involved. I just took a stand and I said, we're not going to tolerate this anymore in this County, uh, violating rights of citizens. And they blinked. And several days later, the Amishman received a letter, a certified letter in the mail, releasing him from the grand jury. And to this day, that was 2011, but to this day, those inspectors have not returned to that farm. <laughs> I, I can't and, tell you how pleased I am. Now, but that's, she, go ahead. Please. That's the power of a sheriff. And sheriffs nationwide bemoan the fact that they've lost authority and they've lost uh, the ability to do things. It's because they've let it lapse. They've, they've given it away and they need to step up to the plate with some backbone. I agree with you completely. And here in Fairfax County, our own sheriff is one of the 5% that has allowed herself to be relegated to being the county jailer. She has no authority and frankly, no self-respect in relation to the citizens of Fairfax County. And I'm personally offended that the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors has voted to destroy Confederate memorials and to prohibit guns from a nature reserve where bears have been photographed in the last year and a half. Now, Sheriff Richard Mack, you have a similar story, I think, about a bridge repair, is that correct? Yes, uh, in 1994, uh, about I'd say about uh, seven or eight months after I filed my lawsuit against the federal government in 1994, uh, we had a bridge washout. And of course, the federal government came in and said, they own that bridge, they own the river. And then they said, oh, wait, we don't own the bridge, you guys do, but we own the river. And it was the Gila River, G-I-L-A, in the southeast part of the county. And when that bridge is washed out, the farmers and ranchers on the north side of the bridge can't take their kids to school uh, just two or three miles away. So it's a 26 mile round trip to have to go to the next uh, bridge to the west part of the county. And the board of supervisors, the county commissioners didn't know what to do. Uh, and so finally after nine or 10 months, the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers still haven't fixed the bridge, okay? And finally the farmers and ranchers didn't get mad at the EPA or Army Corps of Engineers. They got mad at the Board of Supervisors. And so they finally got the guts to vote unanimously to fix the bridge. Now, I wasn't involved in any of it. I'm not the bridge fixer, okay? But now I get involved because the Army Corps of Engineers came in and, and the EPA came in and threatened the three uh, county commissioners. And they said, if you guys touch that bridge, We'll, we will arrest all three of you for allowing it. We will charge the county $35,000 a day for every day you're in violation. And we will arrest every maintenance worker at the site. Well, now I get involved. And so 
Uh, I called the Armored Corps of Engineers and the EPA uh, people in, and I said, look, I don't know if you guys have already heard, but I'm kind of crazy. I'm already suing the Clinton administration on the Brady Bill, and we have to follow the Constitution. When I ran for office, I said, we will follow the Constitution in this county. And so I said, if you're going to be in this county, you're going to follow the Constitution. And I said, none of you have authority to arrest anybody in my county. So if you want to get along, you're going to just step aside and let us fix the bridge. Uh, or you're going to go to jail. And I said, you know, maybe the county attorney will just release you. But uh, if I have to, I'll arrest you again. So anyway, uh, this is the same thing with uh, the situation in Elkhart County. They left and never came back. We fixed the bridge. We didn't pay a dime in fines and nobody went to jail. It ended perfectly. And quite honestly, I've, I've discussed this with Brad and other sheriffs. I haven't seen one time, and there's been plenty of others. Uh, Sheriff Clark took some real strong stance. Sheriff uh, uh, Glenn Palmer out in Grant County, uh, sheriffs in Utah, sheriffs in New Mexico, sheriffs in Florida. There's a lot of sheriffs, dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of sheriffs who have taken strong stands every single time the sheriff has won. And what we know about that, what we've learned from that, from Sheriff Rogers' situation in Indiana, mine in Arizona, and several others, is that the federal government does not want to fight with the sheriffs. And local officials don't either. I love that. And, and uh, I am a member of CSPOA, and I do have my little posse badge uh, uh, here. Um, and I'm a very strong supporter of CSPOA, and I'm trying to get the pastors to either join CSPOA or create the Constitutional Pastors Association of America. And I've reached out to Reverend Bill Owens and, and a couple of other pastors, Chuck Baldwin. I believe that between the sheriffs, the pastors, and perhaps the local magistrates, there is a new movement of local constitutional authority. I think you both have done a superb job. I'd like to honor uh, Brad Rogers and ask him if he has any parting words and then Sheriff Mack, the last word will go to you. Well, thank you. I, it, just remember that if you're a sheriff or even a sheriff's deputy, when we raise our right hand and we take an oath of office, it's not to arrest bad guys or write speeding tickets. Oh yeah, those are parts of the job by law that we can do, but we take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution to the best of our ability, so help me God. And that is our promise. Now, people say, well, you don't have a right to pick and choose what law you, you uh, enforce and this and that. Well, listen, I didn't check my mind at the door. And that oath that was put in place by our founding fathers knew how important it was that every component, every branch of government, every public servant take that oath because there's going to be evil men, there's going to be people who make mistakes, like you and I, we can make mistakes. But if we all promise that, then the Constitution will stand. And uh, I'm telling you, whether you're, you're a sheriff of a small town or small county, or a sheriff of a huge county, uh, you wield a lot of authority. And that oath is, is very important. And I highly recommend that you check out CSPOA.org, the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. Join it, come, uh, come to our conferences. Uh, we're not suggesting that uh, everybody is uh, a constitutional expert, nor is every day a constitutional crisis. We're not suggesting that. But there are those times, those watershed moments that will come across your path that you can make a big difference. And uh, it all starts with you. I think that's a wonderful lead into our close. And I just want to, before I ask uh, Sheriff Mack to close us out, I want to emphasize that as a CIA spy, as the founding senior civilian who created the Marine Corps intelligence activity, and as the top nonfiction reviewer reading across 98 categories with multiple websites, including two focused on satanic pedophilia and on Wall Street crime, I absolutely guarantee you that a majority of our federal, state, and local officials have been compromised by powers that do not have the public interest in mind. Sheriff Mack, the last word to you, sir. Well, you, you can 
see what America would be like today if we had sheriffs in every state like Brad Rogers. Uh, because uh, one part that he just brought up about us taking the oath and picking and choosing. Well, the picking and choosing is the oath. The argument is over about what we can pick and choose when we took the oath. We have to pick and choose the Constitution. If there's a law that's not constitutional, I can't enforce it. I swore an oath that I would not. And they said, well, only the Supreme Court can decide that. No, the Supreme Court did not take my oath for me. I did. I took it. I'm responsible for it. When I take that oath, it presupposes that I will know and understand the Constitution, and I will enforce it as such, just as the Founding Fathers intended. So I, I love what Brad said. We must all, in local governments, especially the sheriffs, enforce the Constitution. Put liberty first. And, and I will reiterate what, what Sheriff Rogers said, County Commissioner Rogers said. Uh, everyone in this country can join the CSPOA. You don't have to be a sheriff or deputy. We need citizens part of this. The sheriff works for you. You are his only boss. If we get the pastors and people and sheriffs in this country working together for the holy cause of liberty, we win and we take America back tomorrow. And that is the last word. Thank you both.